is based on the last one happening. You can just predict it on out as far as you want. A couple of problems. One, the further out you get, the rattier your answer gets because each one's assuming that your last one was true. So your assumptions, your errors and your assumptions are building as you go out. It's the same with probable reality. The further out in time you go, you know, the more likely you are to have error in it. So that's your probable reality. Now, in order to know what is most probable, you can't just say, oh, this is most probable. You have to calculate the probability of everything to know what's most probable. Math is just like that. I know it's annoying, but you have to do the whole thing in order to find out just the one thing you want. Right? It's always like that. So it has calculated all of the possibilities that all of the conscious beings and all of the stuff and energy, the storms, the rocks, rolling downhill, everything, it's calculated where it's going to be the next step. Everything that could happen, you know, might happen kind of thing. And then you can trace a path through the highest probability you get in all the states. Okay, so that's basically the way that works. So now you have this probable reality out there of everything that could possibly happen, and one of those things does happen the next time increment because we here do our free will thing and something happens. Okay, that's the present. And as soon as we march to the next one, that one we just left drops into the probable or it's, it drops into the history, right? It's now in a history file. But there's two kinds of history there. There's the history that we actualized, the actualized history, that's the things we actually did with our free will, and there's the unactualized history, that's all those other things that we didn't do. Just like there's all those probabilities that we might do but didn't, all of those become unactualized history. So you've got basically three databases. You've got your future probability, You've got your actualized history and your unactualized history. And just think of these as databases. Remember, we're only talking about data streams. Think of a big database, and you get to query the database. You query it with your intent. That's how you query the database. Now, you can go into the future probable realities, and you can look around, and you can follow the probability lines, and you can get off the main probability and go through anywhere you want. You can change things and say, well, if I change this, how does that change the probabilities? This is a very nice system. It'll, it'll uh, follow your intent. It'll recalculate those probabilities and show you what that, what that might be. Now, that's a pretty handy tool, isn't it? You can do the same thing in the past. You can go back along our history thread. Like you could go to, uh, you know, and say, well, what would have happened if uh, Adolf Hitler had won World War II? If he was the winner, you know, and we were the loser, what would happen there? Well, you can find that out. It'll recalculate those states, and what it'll do is it'll keep, pick every probable thing that would have happened by all the people there. All the people like you and I who were there then are modeled as, you know, you know, as statistical models. Well, you say, that's tough, modeling a person as a statistical model. Well, it's tough for us, but it's not tough for a database that knows every thought we've ever had, every action we've ever taken, every intent we've ever mustered, you know, every feeling we've ever had, because that's all part of the record. So you can make a pretty good model when you have that sort of database, and it doesn't just necessarily go for this life experience. It can go for a lot of life experiences. That's one heck of a database on you. You know, you didn't know you had a record like that, but don't tell any, don't tell any lies when you get over there because it won't work. Anyway. You can visit these places a couple of ways. You can watch it like a movie, where your intent is bringing up the movie of choice, or you can actually get into it like you're part of the movie. You can join the movie. Then you can change things in that movie and watch it. All you're doing is querying a database that has all the data in it. Okay, it's available to you because your consciousness and what you do is take in data. And those data makes pictures and, uh, or feelings or whatever. You know, you got all the data there. So all that's possible. Um, so basically, everything that can happen does happen, but it happens in probability. The only thing that really gets actualized is what our free will does. Now, okay, we have free will, and we don't do what was predicted. What happens? Well, the computer just has to start calculating again. We make that computer start over. But it doesn't have to start over and do the whole thing. All it has to do is calculate what changes it has to make in order to make it fit what it is that we really did. Because you have free will, you don't have to do what your model might 
Instead, what's most probable, you can do something really bizarre if you want to. That, that works. And actually, most of us do, some of the time, do things that are bizarre. That's our, uh, that's our right to do that. And when it does, it recalculates. So you might, uh, you, know, you might wonder about that. How would you know that you're in these realities? Well, when people have precognitive dreams, basically, while in that dream state, they've gotten some data out of this future probable reality. Right? That's where they get that from. But they don't know that that's where they are. You know, it's just an experience. Until you are able to go there enough times that you get the lay of the land, you know what you're doing, you know how it works, you know how to access data in a very particular way, then you just stumble around in these places and you don't know. So that's why you get a lot of confusion. You won't know whether you're in our past history, whether you're in what happened, what didn't happen, what could have happened, or where else. If you just wander around in here aimlessly, then you will get a lot of pictures. And you'll see a lot of stuff. But exactly what you're seeing, was it something that was on our history thread or one of those things that could have happened but didn't? You know, that's why your, your data is sometimes hard to, uh, to deal with. Okay, let's go on. This is just a real simple rendition of what I just said. Here's OS. Remember, that's our physical reality plus everything non-physical interacts with us. Now, right at this point, it had three choices. It could go to here, to there, or to there. At that point, all of these things are future probable realities, right? And then it makes the choice. It goes over here. As soon as it does that, all of this and all of this become past, right? They're no longer in our future because it made a choice over to here. It can't go there anymore. So all that becomes unactualized history data. All right, now it's over here. It can go to one of these three spots. Everything up here is its potential probable future reality. It makes a choice. Now all of these drop off. And the only thing now that it's in our probable future reality are these, and so on, as it marches through. Of course, every delta T, every time it makes a choice, all these lines get spread out more and more and more, and you know, more things are done. So it keeps spreading as it goes. Now, I only did three. You know, that's pretty small. There's really billions and trillions of choices that have to be made to change a state. But if I put billions and trillions of little circles on that page, it just wouldn't be a pretty picture. And that is a pretty picture. All right. So let's go to the next one. This now is that future probability surface. Okay, think of time going out from the origin in all directions. Here's time going out in all directions. And here's the probabilities of events happening, these little green, green uh, things. So you see near the origin, where time's, you know, is close to the now, the present is at the origin, there's a lot of pretty tall probabilities. It's not hard to predict what's going to happen in you know, the next 10 minutes. That's easier. You know, if you try to predict next week, that's harder. You try to predict next year, that's really hard, and you know, the next uh, 10 years, it's harder. It keeps getting harder because the probability, like you come out here, and this probability now smeared out over time. Sometimes they're smeared out in this way over events, you know, because a lot of things might be probable there. So they kind of lose their definition. But occasionally, like out here and maybe here, you can go pretty far out and find something that really has a, a very distinct probable, you know, probability of happening. And that's the kind of thing that a prognosticator would like to get a hold of, because that has a real high chance of actually happening, even if that's 10 or 15 or 20 years off. Just for its own reasons, you know, it just happens to be that way. All right, next. Okay, logical uh, implications of this. Uh, what are the connections between physics, metaphysics, philosophy, religion, you know, all the things I talked about? Well, they are all partial views of the same reality from different perspectives, different beliefs, different assumptions. Okay, they're the same reality creates all of that. You just look at it from different...